Hey guys and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware. Today we're taking a look at this setup, specifically the CPU under this Wraith Stealth heatsink, and that would be the Ryzen 3 1200. We're gonna put it through its paces with a few modern 2019 titles, and really just answer the question whether the Ryzen 3 1200 is still a really good budget option for somebody that's trying to build a low-end gaming system that still maintains a lot of upgradability down the road. So let's take a look at this CPU and see if it's still up to 2019 games. Now before we actually jump into the testing of this CPU, I want to make mention of this platform because this Ryzen 3 1200 is currently sitting on a B350 motherboard from MSI. This is their Gaming Plus motherboard and it does have compatibility with Ryzen 3000 series CPUs and most B350 boards that I've seen out there do have that support. Though that's definitely one of those things you want to check up on before you purchase a motherboard and that is something that you're going to want to have on your motherboard for a Ryzen first gen product and that's mostly just because it gives you a fantastic upgrade path moving forward that isn't necessarily available on all B350 motherboards. It's really dependent on whether the manufacturer has pushed out a BIOS update to support those Ryzen 3000 series chips. Now I do believe that most B350 motherboards do support Ryzen 3000, but like I said, definitely check up on that. This one in particular does. And I was able to snag the 1200, the motherboard and eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM running at just 2133 megahertz. So very basic RAM, but I snagged the whole platform for $100 flat. Now for the testing here, I'm not actually using that RAM that I purchased with this whole set up because it's only eight gigabytes and I really want to test more of the CPU. So I'm giving this setup as much a chance to succeed as possible with uh, 16 gigabytes here of Corsair LPX running at 3200 megahertz. It's a 3600 kit though I was only able to get it stable at 3200 megahertz and it's paired with a GTX 1070 Ti. This is a for the win edition from EVGA. So if we're seeing any sort of bottlenecking, any sort of stuttering, any sort of just unplayable games whatsoever, this is not a problem with the GPU or with the RAM, especially at 1080p, which is what we're testing at, because my inkling is if you're buying a really budget system featuring a 1200, then you're probably looking at 1080p gaming to begin with, at least in most titles, though certainly some indie games and really some even AAA type games with this setup would actually run fairly well on the CPU, because as we know, as you shift more towards resolution like 1440p 4K, you're putting more and more load on the GPU and the CPU isn't necessarily working all that much harder to render out 1440 or 4K uh, gaming. So this could potentially work for that. But what we're really trying to test here is at 1080p, can this CPU still handle modern AAA titles? And the games we're going to be looking at here are Anno 1800, which is probably a little bit more of a CPU intensive game. We have Metro Exodus on there as well. And I also threw in the Resident Evil remake. That's Resident Evil 2 remake since it just recently came out as well. So all those games will be tested. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. So let's go ahead and jump into those titles and see just how well they performed. Anno 1800 is likely the most demanding title, at least when it comes to CPU load of the three titles that I did test. We saw an average FPS here of 62 with a 1% low of 36 and a 0.1% low of 25. Now, subjectively speaking, and I know this doesn't really come across with the screen capture, subjectively speaking though, it was a pretty smooth experience. Though if you're somebody that definitely wants to hit 60 FPS consistently with this title, you would need to drop down settings a little bit further. Though being an RTS type game, the pacing of the game is very slow. You don't really need 60 FPS for this to be a playable title unlike some other more fast-paced styles of games. So for a real-time strategy game like Anno 1800, an average of just over 60 with 1% lows dipping below 60 is likely just fine for the vast majority of people playing this title. Now the Resident Evil 2 remake is in a similar vein as Anno 1800 in that it's not an overly fast paced game, it is a little bit quicker paced than Anno is, but in this case we saw an average of 93 FPS, a 1% low of 54, and a 0.1% low of 31. Now those drops below 60 FPS were not particularly noticeable as they didn't really happen very frequently whatsoever as you can kind of see in the real time frame counter in the top left of the screen there, the experience was very very solid in this particular title at 1080p. So once again, with this title, the Ryzen 1200 gets an easy pass on this particular game. 
Now, of all the titles I tested today, I was most interested in Metro Exodus because it is the fastest paced title that we looked at of these three games. Now, this is also a title that you can change your frame rate a lot based on what settings you key in, so do pay attention to those settings that I show in the opening of this clip. But all things told here, we saw an average FPS on mostly high settings of 106 with a 1% low still above 60 at 67 and a 0.1% low of 53. Now in this opening level in the subway here, I saw virtually no existence of any stuttering whatsoever. In fact, I can't think of a single instance here where it did stutter, which would contribute to those higher 0.1% and 1% low numbers hovering right there around 60, a little bit north of that if you're talking about 1% low. But I was overall extremely pleased with the result of the Ryzen 1200 here because this was a game that requires you to maintain a higher frame rate for it to be truly enjoyable. And that's exactly what we got out of the Ryzen 1200 here. So this, the third game I tested here, is yet another pass. So all three of these games are extremely playable on the Ryzen 1200 here in late 2019. Now, as the used market sits right now, you can get a Ryzen 1200 for about $40 to $45, depending on where you're looking. I just looked, and on AliExpress, you can get it with free shipping for $42 if you're in the United States. So that's about the price point they're going at right now. And if it were me, I would look more towards the Ryzen 1400 because you get uh, multiple threads per core. Then you would have eight threads instead of the four threads that you get the Ryzen 1200. And you're not really investing much more money to get to a Ryzen 1400. All that being said though, if you're looking at local deals and you see one of these come across, uh, whether it's Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, wherever you're looking, if you see a good deal on a Ryzen 1200, especially if it features a motherboard and RAM combo, sort of like mine did, mine wasn't the best price out there, but it certainly was a solid price nonetheless, then you might wanna go ahead and jump on it because frankly, unless you're doing a lot more than just gaming, if you're just planning to use your PC for you know gaming, then a Ryzen 1200 is gonna be just fine in modern AAA titles if you're talking 1080p, and in all reality, probably 1440p and even some 4K games would run just fine on a Ryzen 1200. Now, if you're parting your system together and you buy the 1200 separately from the RAM, then you will probably want to go ahead and buy a little bit faster RAM than the base level 2133 megahertz that came with my 1200. Pair it with something like 3000 megahertz, 3200 megahertz. It seems like those speeds are still in a really nice price point. Whereas if you go much higher than that, you start to pay a premium for that extra speed. And Ryzen CPUs, especially these first and second generation Ryzen CPUs, really do like faster RAM. So it's definitely worth sort of keeping in mind if you're putting together a first or a second gen Ryzen PC on the used market. But it is absolutely still a solid gaming chip to be using. And the great thing about going with first or second gen Ryzen instead of some of these older Intel based systems like the 3000 or 2000 series of Intel CPUs is that the current Ryzen B350, first gen, second gen, uh, B450 even, those platforms have a great upgrade path. I could just drop in upgrade a Ryzen 3600 down the road if I really wanted to and move from four cores, four threads to six cores and 12 threads. The VRMs on this motherboard will be absolutely fine for handling that and you would get a massive increase on your CPU performance. And of course we know that there was a massive uplift between first and third generation Ryzen chips on the IPC as well. So you're just getting a massive upgrade path there. If you go with something like a first first or second gen Ryzen chip instead of going with an older Intel based system because AMD has done such a fantastic job maintaining forwards compatibility with these older motherboards where you can get a B350 motherboard and pair it with third gen Ryzen. Now sure you won't get PCI uh, gen four, but you still get the, the majority of your money back out of it in, the, in regards to getting at CPU performance. So I'm rambling now, I'm gonna just sort of cut that off there. The Ryzen 3 1200 is still a really solid gaming chip in late 2019. I do want to hear from you guys, especially for those of you that are still rocking that first gen Ryzen stuff, whether it's a Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5, or Ryzen 7 chip, or really even a Threadripper first gen chip. Let me know how your PC is still performing in modern games, like games that have been released in the last year or so. Let me know your thoughts on this Ryzen 3 1200 setup as well. Let me know everything down below in those comments. And of course, if you like this video and you want to see more like it, like seeing more from this Ryzen 1200, which you actually will be seeing in the somewhat near future, give this video a like, share, subscribe, and comment. All those things are very helpful to the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube 
queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.